Wow. Well, thank you very much. Um, I'm really honored to receive this sincerely, um, and I want to thank the members of BIFAD, the Selection Committee. Um, I, I really want to express my appreciation to the Fish Innovation Lab um, team who nominated me. I really appreciate that. But I also, importantly, especially um, given our topic for today, I want to accept this award on behalf of my team, who I very intentionally list here, um, who did this work with me, um, in partnership with me. So it's really rare one gets the opportunity to share your research um, with an audience like this. Uh, so that's another um, real honor today. As many of you know, um, one in five children around the world have stunted growth, and over 50% of children experience hidden hunger or deficiencies in iron, zinc, vitamin A, and many other deficiencies. Um, let me start again. I, I, I just want to say, very importantly, the problem that I work on is stunted growth, and one in five children experience this. Animal source foods is the focus of my research. Um, Animal source foods can provide these nutrients in highly bioavailable and efficient ways. But on the other side of the equation, as many of you may have heard um, yesterday, animal source foods are contributing to um, climate change. So 30% of greenhouse gas emissions, 70% of freshwater extraction, 40% of land use, with some debate about how those um, figures are measured. So the pressing question I think we all need to have in Feed the Future Innovation Labs is how do we nourish almost 8 billion people? How do we nourish them well in equitable and sustainable ways? So our research um, for the Fish Innovation Lab, can you hear me okay? Okay, thank you. Okay. Um, stunting prevalence in the Kenyan context where we work in coastal Kenya, that's perfect. Um, is 37 percent, uh, which well exceeds the national average of 17 percent. Marine fisheries, on the other hand, um, is chronically overexploited with a fourfold decrease in catch since the 1980s. We led a, a quick start, which was a one-year formative research project, to look at the barriers and opportunities to improving young child nutrition, finding um, some interesting findings about high prevalence of enteric disease, um, ways that people prepare fish, um, et cetera. And we used community-engaged research um, to, to talk to BMU leaders, female elders, community health workers, and households. So as we've been talking about um, in the last uh, few hours, research design is critical. So we designed a cluster randomized control trial with a longitudinal um, design to test an integrated intervention that combined social marketing with a modified trap to protect both child health, human health, as well as ecosystem health. It was a 12-month intervention, and we looked at impacts beyond just child growth. We looked at fisheries yield, biomass. We looked at fisheries earnings, so the livelihood impacts, as well as changes in diet and fish consumption. So I'm going to jump right to the findings. Um, these are preliminary findings, they're unpublished, but I, we've run enough analysis that I feel confident in showing them, and they're really exciting. We'll skip that. That's still under construction. That's our flow diagram, um, but it does show the different um, groups. We have a control group, like I said. We have a social marketing group, and then a third group is social marketing plus the modified trish, tr uh, fish trap intervention. The social marketing involved household visits, um, uh, fisher workshops, as well as um, flyers and different forms of communication to change behavior. And then the modified fish, you can see the trap on the left, uh, I guess it's your right, um, allows juvenile fish to escape so that fish can grow to a greater length, thereby protecting the marine ecosystem. So, after many, many months of work and many years of work and hard work on the part of the um, field team, our findings showed um, through regression analyses, difference in difference analyses, 
that we increase significantly child height for age Z score. This is a hard outcome to, to attain, so the reduction in stunting. We significantly increase with a large effect size the impacts on child dietary diversity and child fish intake. And then on the fishery side, this was equally as exciting. We showed that there was a significant intervention effects on length of the fish and on species richness, indicators of ecosystem health. Um, as well, I'm looking at our economist, um, we improved livelihood outcomes. So there was an increase in biomass, in revenue, and catch value. And then finally, and excitingly, you can see the, the picture on the left, we changed behavior in terms of a small amount of fish being taken home to give to the child. Fisher, the small fisher households are selling fish, um, but they're still reserving some to take home to childs. And this is what ultimately led to the big impact on nutrition. So as we like to say in Samaki fish, <laughs> long fish and long children were the outcomes from this project. So to conclude, um, integrated interventions, approaches are effective for nutrition livelihoods and environmental sustainability. Team science is the way to go. Working with public health nutritionists, we can, um, anthropologists, marine ecologists, economists, um, we blend our methods and our metrics to get to the outcomes that we both are looking for. We can protect both human and ecosystem health simultaneously. Fish health and human health equals planetary health. And then this aligns with the nourishing biomes paradigm that we're working on and the reciprocity that we can find in human health and planetary health. And finally, USAID, all of you, Feed the Future Innovation Labs, can play a crucial role in upholding equity and sustainability. So thank you very much. Thank you.